Happy Thursday morning, everybody. Today's Coffee with Kenny is about being sure of yourself and believing in what you're doing and believing in what you're saying. Being sure of yourself. So that leads me to Waylon Jennings. Let's go to Luke and Box, Texas. Waylon and Willie and the boys. Their successful life of living. Sing the rest of it. <laughs> All right. So, um, Waylon Jennings and um, Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder. Remember Stevie Wonder? Stevie Blind, but boy, he can sing. Stevie still living with us, or is he not? I, I don't remember Stevie Wonder still living. But anyway, I'll watch his documentary. And uh, remember that song? We are the world. We are the children. We are the ones who make a better day. So let's start living. Anyway, that song. So after like the Grammys, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago, Years ago, they said, we're going to get all the stars together, the greatest stars that America and the world has. And we're going to raise money, and we, we're going to, you know, feed the children because there was people starving, you know, in other parts of the world. Well, the only problem when you do this is you, you gather up all the stars, and boy, they got egos, you know, they're... I'm the best. There's nobody better than me. <laughs> so anyway, Stevie Wonder, you know, he starts acting goofy. He says, I want to change the words to, we are the world to something different, something from some other country. And everybody's trying to, you know, calm Stevie down. And uh, so all of a sudden, you see Waylon Jennings just walk out, walk the hell out. Now stop and think about it. You got the greatest musicians in the world in this room. I mean, you look back and they're, it's a who's who. It's a smorgasbord of, I mean, the greatest. I mean, all the names. So you want to be part of this. Waylon Jennings, he just walked out. Lionel Richie, when they're doing this documentary, Lionel Richie said during this process of trying to calm Stevie Wonder down, you know, Waylon Jennings, he's a badass. Waylon, you know, he's a country boy and he's, you know, from somewhere. I don't know where he's from, Texas, you know, Nashville, wherever it is. Waylon left and he walked out like a boss. He's like, I don't need all you crazy ass people. Y'all thinking, you know, just let's sing the damn song. And Stevie was all jacked up on Sundrop. Wanted to change the words right in front of, you know, 50 to 100 of the greatest singers and musicians. That leads me to this. Being comfortable in your own shoes. Standing for what you believe in. Now I'm gonna make a hard, I'm gonna make a hard 90 degree right here. Hang on, okay? I'm gonna make a hard 90 degree here. Hang on. Bernie Sanders, the politician. A lot of people think he's just crazy. Cause he wants everybody to be the same. And Bernie's, you know, Bernie says what he says, but one thing everybody agrees on. Is Bernie believes in what he says, and he's been saying it forever. So Waylon and Jennings believed in what he believed in, and he said, I don't need none of you nutcases. You must think you're perfect. Wanting to change the word to watch the documentary. You, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And it was some weird-ass thing Stevie Wonder wanted to do. And, but it was funny, Lionel Rich said, we lost Waylon right at that time. Well, when, when people, you know, when they believe in something, they just stand their course, call them crazy all you want, but at least they, they they're not wishy-washy. 
You know, the worst thing you can do is have a leader that's wishy-washy. Yes, no, okay, I'll go with you. So that's where I am right now on the whole damn points thing. That whole damn NASCAR points thing. Some of you are like a damn bunch of mob. You're a, you're a mob. You're like, you're coming at me like, rah. And you're saying mean, mean stuff to me. And I don't appreciate it. I see it out there. I see y'all getting cocky as hell. Some people calling me a clown. Some people saying, you don't understand. Us fans just don't like it. So let me just tell you this. I'm going to shove it right back up your ass. I like the point system, okay? So I'm going to be cocky just like you. And I'm going to stand my ground. And I'm like Waylon Jennings. I'm walking right the hell out of this conversation because I like the point system. You're not going to wear me down. I like the point system. I'm sure of myself. I'm a badass. I stand for what I believe in. NASCAR is a great sport. You all bitch 24-7. You're never happy. And that's what Kenny Schrader says. You're never going to please everybody. I don't mind debating with you, but I don't like you guys calling me names. And I don't like you all being sarcastic with me. So I get the last laugh. I'm a badass. I'm going to stand for what I believe in, all right? I like the point system. Like I told you, though, I'll change those last races like I've always thought. I would like to see the championship end deciding, you know, three races. We go to Phoenix. We go to Miami Homestead. We go to Vegas. All right, everybody, that's that. <laughs> Let's go to Luke and Mark, Texas, Waylon and Willie and the boys. All right, got another one on my mind. I was with Sunoco Racing and my friend Fred McConnell yesterday went down to Texas and uh, drove these Rush race cars, had these Suzuki motors in the back, and boy, they hauled ass. They had paddle shifters. Wee, wee, wee. Wing, wing. They were awesome. And boy, my shoulders hurt today. I got these two torn tenants over here on this one shoulder. And uh, I was getting about, we'd run 30 minutes straight. You talk about a workout. Shit, I'm ready to get into my dirt car now. <laughs> Man, that thing, uh, I couldn't, you know, late in my NASCAR career, I'd get about lap 250 of a 300 lap race. And when I turn right, my right shoulder started hurting right here. It's like I've wore my shoulder slam out. So anyway, I got down to like a minute 19, 35. Some of the kids run like in, I think the fastest badass son bitch there was Blair. He ran like, you know, 117, five. These kids, uh, they're good. They're young and they're good. It, uh, I want to tell you something that I witnessed. Here I am, 61. These guys are in their, you know, they were 25, maximum, maximum 28 years old. Boy, this new group, they are really into the digital era to the maximum peak. Sitting there and, and they say, come on, let's go study the course. Let's go in the room. And so we're sitting there and he's got the computer up there, the layout of the track digitally though, like, you know, showing where you're at, but but it's not really showing the real racetrack. It's just showing the outlet. So I'm like, okay, what corner is this? You know, they spent a damn hour and they had not made it halfway around the racetrack. And these kids, there's like five of them. They're like, okay, what are you doing here? Me, I'm like, hey, what gear are you in in that corner? What gear are you, what gear are you getting a six? No, I'm staying in fifth. Okay. I'm talking about what gear are you in? You know, I know the angle of the dangle. I know you got to be here to get there. You know, I get all that. Grew up racing my whole life. But these kids are perfectionists. They, in NASCAR, these kids now, 
They run these sims, which is fine. I like sims because it's real time. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it's like real. Like a sim probably doesn't relate to a lot of people. If you've never been to a racetrack, you get on a sim. It's 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 like it's like you're really in the race car. So let's say you go to a racetrack you've never been to. You get in a sim, and all of a sudden you run it for an hour or so. Then when you get to that racetrack in real, you know where everything's at. But these kids nowadays, it's official. They've passed me up. I'm old school. They talk to each other about this and that, this, this and that. And I'm like, I was about to lose my mind. So finally he came up, he goes, okay, let's go to my in-car camera. I'm like, yes, <laughs> that's what I want to see. I want to see you drive the racetrack from, from your helmet, you know? So I uh, thought I'd add that in there. Uh, I know, you know, I hear about Kyle Larson and Martin. They say Martin Truex can break things down in detail. Kyle Larson's like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> true, true story. So you got some drivers that are good, what they call data drivers. You got some drivers, NASCAR will hire some drivers, like David Reagan. David Reagan's a sim driver and he tells that Ford team, here's what this, you know, here's this. We tried this setup in their simulator. And David Reagan does all that. But you got some drivers like Kyle Larson, they'll go, you know, Chevrolet go, hey, Kyle, you know, what about it? And Kyle Larson's like, I, I don't know. I just do it, you know. And I'm like, Kyle's got a God's gift. But I just want to say that these these new kids, man, they just, they're digitally enhanced and they're just, oh, sorry. <laughs> The real Herman came out. That's where I would use that word. So, yesterday made me realize I'm 61 years old. I'll go run my dirt car. <laughs> Have a great Thursday, everybody.